Good morning and welcome to Mobile Device Manager Plus training. Before I can start off, I'd like to know whether you're able to hear my voice as well as see the presentation. Please confirm the same by commenting on chat. I am waiting for your confirmations. Once I get that, I'll start the presentation. Thank you folks for your confirmation. Now let me kick off. Mobile Device Manager Plus training program is a two week training program aimed at facilitating better understanding of all the features that MDM has on offer. We are in week two today where we'll be seeing device enrollment and provisioning. The previous training session covered app management and device security. We hope the session was informative and useful. All details regarding our training will be available in this link below. In addition to this, we'll mail you the recorded video session of this training. Let me introduce myself. I'm Achudan, and I'm happy to be your trainer for today. Now we'll have a look at the training agenda for today's exciting training session. This is the agenda in a nutshell. Firstly, we'll have an overview of the product and then this training session basically incorporates a problem solution approach whereby I've taken a few scenarios that have commonly encountered in our support now let us look at the agenda in further detail under the overview we'll have a general introduction about mobile device manager plus have a look at the MDMP architecture and then have a look at the ports that are used by MDM and lastly, a high level view on how MDM actually manages the devices. As I said previously, this training session incorporates a problem solution approach. And the first such problem that we'll be seeing is how to enroll mobile devices. We'll look at how MDM provides you with solutions for enrolling devices that are in use as well as new devices. The second scenario will be pushing configurations to manage devices. With more and more organizations going mobile first, it is imperative that all the requisite corporate configurations are pushed without any user intervention and the user can start using the device from the get go. We'll look at the solutions that are provided by MDM for the same. This will be followed by a quick look at few scenarios and their solutions. We'll end this session with the questions that have been posed by the customers. In case you have got any queries, please don't hesitate to post it on chat. I've got an expert panel waiting here, ready to answer your questions. Now let me kick off. Firstly, we'll have an overview of Mobile Device Manager Plus. Mobile Device Manager Plus can be used for managing iOS, Android, and Windows mobile devices as well as tablets. In case of Windows, you can additionally manage Windows desktops as well as laptops. It is available as an add-on to Manage Engine, Desktop Central, an integrated desktop and mobile device management solution. We are also offering the mobile device management solution as a standalone offering in on-premises as well as on cloud. Let us understand the Mobile Device Manager Plus architecture. It will provide you with an wholesome idea about how MDM actually works. It consists of three important components, namely the MDM server, the notification services, and the managed devices. As you can see, the server doesn't directly contact the managed devices. Instead, the server contacts the notification services, which in turn contacts the enrolled devices, which then interact with the MDM server. As you can see, the notification services are platform specific with Apple Push Notification Service or APNS for iOS, Google Cloud Messaging Service or GCM for Android, and Windows Notification Service or WNS for Windows. As the devices to be managed are mobile, it is recommended that you NAT your internal IP address with an external IP address. 
For those of you who are worried about exposing your server to the external network, you need not worry because MDM offers you Secure Gateway. Secure Gateway, as the name suggests, ensures that all the incoming communications to the MDM server are first routed to the secure gateway before actually reaching the MDM server. This adds an extra layer of security. Additionally, you can also configure Active Directory for authentication purpose. In case you are using MDM Cloud, you need not be worried about any of these. As you just saw, there's a lot of communication that is happening in the MDM server setup. So how does this communication happen? This communication happens using ports, which facilitate all the communications that are happening on the MDM server. For example, the device to MDM server communication takes place in the secure HTTP channel using port 9383. The MDM server to notification services uses port 2195 in case of APNS and 443 in case of GCM or WNS. Similarly, the device to notification services uses these ports. So you must be curious as to how MDM actually manages devices. In case of iOS and Windows devices, it leverages the native MDM client that is present. And in case of Android devices, you need to install the MEMDM app on the device to actually manage them. That brings us to the end of the overview. Hope you will have a high level idea about MDM. Now let me jump into the first scenario, enrolling mobile devices. Enrolling here refers to onboarding the device onto the MDM solution for further device management. Assume I am an IT administrator of an organization, Zilker, with the predominant mobile-only workforce, and now I have decided to use MDM for my device management needs. But before we start, there is an interesting conundrum. Since the organization has been mobile first, there are devices that are already in use, by which I mean the devices are already being used by the employees. And similarly, there are devices that are in the inventory fresh devices that are to be handed over to the employees when they join. So there are two different categories, and we'll see how MDM caters to each of them. First up, we'll look at how to enroll devices that are already in use. So we have got two options available in case of enrolling devices that are already in use. The first option is to enroll the devices using email invites. The second option is to enroll them using self-enrollment. We look at each of these options in greater detail. But before we can actually understand these methodologies, first up, you need to understand the benefits of using these enrollment methods. The first benefit is that it lets you isolate the personal and the corporate workspace that is present on the device. This is ideally useful in case of personal devices because the organization can have full control over the corporate workspace without having any control on the personal one, ensuring data privacy. The second benefit is that it will prevent unauthorized data access. We'll be seeing one such method later during this session. And the third benefit is that it restricts sharing of corporate data from the managed tabs to unmanaged tabs. I hope you remember we explored various methods to achieve this in the previous training session. Now, this is how enrollment by invites actually is done in MDM. Firstly, the IT administrator sends an invite to the user. The user then accepts the invitation, scans the QR code that is present, and after scanning, accesses the enrollment URL. Once he accesses the enrollment URL, all he needs to do is to follow the on-screen instructions, after which the device gets enrolled with MDM. We'll see how this is done on the MDM server. So this is my MDM server, and this is the enrollment window. But before we can actually enroll our devices, there is one major prerequisite, which is APNS. APNS, as we already saw, is used for managing iOS devices. So I'll click on APNS certificate on the left pane. As you can see, I have configured APNS here, but for your benefit, 
I'll show how to go about configuring APNS certificate in another server. So I'll take you to another server. So this is the APNS server. Just let me log in. So this is the APNS certificate. I'm sorry. So we'll have to first create and sign a CSR. This CSR has already is already present on the MDM server. So all you need to do is to provide a corporate email address. So I'll do that and provide an organization name. Once I have done that, I click on create and sign CSR. As you can see, the request is being processed. As you can see, the CSR has been successfully signed by MDM. The next step is to create an APNS. So to do that, you need to download the vendor signed CSR, which we just did. The signing process was just complete. The next step is to upload this CSR back into the Apple portal. On doing so, you'll get the APNS, which is to be uploaded here. Similarly, you also need to provide the corporate Apple ID, which is used for creating this APNS. Further, the APNS actually sir, expires within an year. To receive notifications regarding APNS expiry, you need to provide an email address for that as well. So once you have done that, this window will be shown. As you can see here, all the basic details regarding the APNS certificate is listed. You can get the CSR details, that is the email address and the organization name that was provided, as well as the certificate details. The certificate details must be used when you plan on renewing the APNS after a year. When the, re uh, when the renew option, when uh, the APNS is ripe for renewal, a button will be shown here stating renew APNS. You need to click on that button and proceed with renewing your APNS. Similarly, you can also choose to remove APNS by clicking this button. So now that we have done with configuring APNS, let me take you to enrollment. So I'll click on devices from the left pane and click on enroll devices. Here, all the devices that can be enrolled are listed. So I'll enroll an iOS device for this case. So I click on iOS devices. As you can see, there are two options by which you can carry out enrollment. You can either choose to enroll the device yourself or through user invite. The first option can be used in case you have the device in your hand or you need to test how MDM works and the features that are present. So I'll first show you how to enroll a device by yourself and then through user invites. So as you can see, I've selected the option by myself. And I had already provided the administrator email address, which has been pre-filled as well. The device is owned by the organization, so I select corporate. I can also choose to assign it to groups. So what does a group mean? Groups is used for clustering all the devices and the users that belong to the same department. This ensures seamless distribution of apps as well as policies related to that particular department. I've already created groups based on departments, so I'll show you an example. So I'll select finance department for this case and click on next. As you can see, all I need to do is to just scan this QR code present and then specify the OTP, which is used as a means of authentication, and then the enrollment is complete. So I'll click on finish. As you can see, the enrollment request has been created and has been added here. Once the device gets enrolled, the status and the remark will be changed. Now I'll show you how to enroll devices using user invites. So I go again, Apple, and then I select iOS devices and select through user invites. As you can see, there are again options for user type. In case you have configured Active Directory, you can choose this option, domain user, and then select a domain but in this case I'm going with the user type local user I'll provide a user provide a username once I provide the username and the email address the next step though not mandatory is to provide the device ownership which is once again corporate and this device falls into the sales department since the user belongs to the sales department as well you can also choose to modify the enrollment invite that is sent to the user by clicking on this option. Since I don't want to modify it now, I'll just click on send enrollment invite. As you can see, the enrollment invite has been sent 
successfully as shown here. Once the enrollment process is initiated, the status and the remarks will be changed in near real time. Once the enrollment is done, the status here is shown as enrolled and the subsequent remarks chain is done as well. Now let me show you what happens on the device end. As you can see, the user needs to provide the OTP that is received via the invite to authenticate himself. Once the authentication is done, the next step is to install the MDM profile. Once that is done, the device gets enrolled successfully and all the status change here, as I said, gets reflected in near real time on the server. Now you must have this question, so do I, uh, my organization has more than 1,000 mobile devices, so should I actually create 1,000 enrollment invites and then send it to the users? No, that is not the case. You can also choose to send 1,000 invites at all at once using bulk enrollment. So I'll explain bulk enrollment now. So I'll click on bulk enrollment. All you need to do in bulk enrollment is to upload a CSV file. The CSV file should contain some requisite details, which I'll explain now. So I click on this example CSV. As you can see, these are the details that are required in the CSV. You need to provide the username, domain name, email address, and other such details. Once you have created a CSV, all you need to do is to upload the CSV here. And once the CSV has been uploaded, all the users that have been listed in the CSV are sent enrollment invites after which they can enroll the devices. Now you must be you must be wondering as to whether there is another step by which you can automate this process of importing CSV as well. Yes, we have got just the right option for you, which is self-enrollment. Self-enrollment, as the name suggests, ensures that the users enroll the devices all by themselves without any admin intervention. So this is how self-enrollment happens in MDM. Firstly, the user needs to access the self-enrollment link from the self-service portal, after which he needs to, he or she needs to provide the Active Directory credentials, after which the device gets enrolled with MDM. Now let me show you how this is done on the server. So I'll take you back to the server. So I'll select self-enrollment from the left pane. As you can see, this is the self-enrollment window and it's got a whole lot of interesting options. I can choose to allow self-enrollment for all the AD groups present in your organization or if you wish to have this self-enrollment privilege only to say a particular group of employees, say just the managers, all you need to do is to add the managers to a particular AD group, select this option, selected AD groups and specify that particular AD group. When this is done, only the selected AD groups will have the option of enrolling the devices using self-enrollment. In case you want to have this option of self-enrollment for all the AD groups, but not for specific AD groups, such as say an AD group consisting of contract employees, you can choose to exclude the specific AD groups by clicking on this link here and adding the particular AD group. But right now, I would want to, enroll, I would want to allow self-enrollment for all AD groups. So I select that and similarly, since the enrollment process is happening without the IT administrator's knowledge, it is recommended that the IT administrator gets notified every time a device gets enrolled via self-enrollment. To do that, you can select this option, notify when a device is enrolled via self-enrollment. Once that is done, you need to provide an email address for this purpose. So I have done just that, itadmin.silka.com. You can optionally provide multiple email addresses as well. Similarly, you can also choose to auto assign the groups. In case you know that the devices that are going to be enrolled via self-enrollment belong to one particular department, say HR or finance, you can choose to preempt this group assignment option here. So I've chosen the platform, the ownership is corporate, and the group is marketing department. So when I do this, any Android do any Android corporate device that is enrolled via self-enrollment gets automatically added to the marketing department and all the policies and the apps that have been distributed to this particular department gets automatically associated to the device without any admin intervention. You can also choose to 
do this for other platforms as well as other ownerships by clicking on the plus button that is present right next. But right now I don't want to add any of that. So I'll just click on save. As you can see, the settings has been saved successfully. And this is the enrollment URL by which the users can enroll the devices by themselves. So all you need to do is to all you need to do is to copy this URL and just paste this URL on the internal message boards of your organization. And the users can access this URL and proceed with the enrollment. Now we'll see what happens on the device end. As you can see, the user needs to open the MEMDM app and select the de deployment type, which is on premise in this case, and then provide the server details, which he has done, and then provide the AD credentials for authentication. And once that is done, the enrollment is complete. Now, now we come to enrolling new devices. So you must be wondering as to why we have categorized the enrollment part into two different groups one with the devices that are already in use and new devices because with new devices comes a whole lot of problems. First of which is that you need to complete the initial setup manually. Now we must have, all of us must have gone through this problem where we excitingly unbox our device and want to use it immediately. But what we are shown is a set of initial setup steps. By the time you complete these steps, the excitement has already died. Now consider the same case for 1,000 different devices. This is what has been affecting every IT administrator in an organization. An IT administrator needs to complete all the initial device activation setup steps manually to even initiate enrollment. The second step is that needs to enroll each device individually in case of new devices. Now the answer to any repeated action is automation and yes, MDM does allow you to automate enrollment. In case of iOS devices, you can automate enrollment using Apple Configurator as well as Apple DEP. In case of Android devices, you can do that using EMM token enrollment as well as zero touch enrollment. We'll look at each of these methods in greater detail. But before that, in case you had any queries, Regarding enrollment of devices that are already in use, please don't hesitate to post it on chat. Now we look at each of these methods one by one. But before looking at that, it is only obvious that we look at the benefits of automating enrollment. First of which is silent app installation. You can install all the enterprise recommended apps on the managed devices without any admin action or user intervention. We saw all these methods in the previous training session. The second advantage is that you can choose to provision devices in kiosk mode. Kiosk mode ensures that the devices are locked to a, to a particular app or a set of apps as well as gets locked to a predefined set of settings and the user cannot move out of the app or modify the settings. Again, this was also explored in last training session. The third benefit is that there is extensive support for all the profiles and configurations that are present in MDM. We'll see how this full support can be done using automated enrollment later during this session. Now that we have seen the benefits, let us look at each of the methods. The first one is Apple Configurator. Apple Configurator is a free tool that has been provided by Apple for bulk enrollment of iOS devices. For Apple Configurator, you will require a Mac machine. So this is how Apple Configurator actually works. First up, you need to install and set up Apple Configurator on a Mac machine. The next step is to connect the devices via USB. Once you have configured them, when you activate these devices, these devices get enrolled automatically with MDM. However, these steps are to be done every time a device is to be enrolled. Now, what are the steps that are involved in setting up Apple Configurator? It has mainly two steps. First of which is you need to add the MDM server. This is 
for the device to contact the relevant MDM server on device activation and enroll itself. The second step is to configure iOS Setup Assistant. The iOS Setup Assistant lets you skip either few or all of the initial setup steps that are shown when the device is booted up for the first time. Now, without further ado, let me take you to Apple Configurator and show you how to how to set up Apple Configurator and enroll devices with MDM. So I'll take you to Apple Configurator. So the first step is to create a blueprint. Now you must be wondering as to what a blueprint is. Blueprint bundles the MDM server details as well as the iOS setup version preferences and then this blueprint is added to the device that has been connected via USB. So blueprint is essentially the carrier. As you can see, I've created a lot of payloads, but for your benefit, I'll create one. So uh, here is the created payload. I'll provide it a name, Silkatex, Silkatest. Now that I've created, the next step is to prepare this blueprint. Under preparation, you'll be providing the MDM server details. So I click on prepare. And we are going to configure the Apple configurator manually. So we select manual configuration and ensure that supervised devices option is selected. Supervision provides the administrator with additional controls and extra management capabilities. This, as I told you previously, is one of the benefits of automated enrollment. Once I've selected that, I click on Next. As you can see, I've already created a server, but for your benefit, I'll create it once again. So I click on New Server, click on Next again, Oh, I'll provide a name to identify the server, provide Zilka training. And this is the URL which the device will use to contact the MDM server. So I'll tell you how to fit where the URL is present on the MDM server. So I'll momentarily take you back to the MDM server. Click on Apple Configurator here. And this is the link that is to be shared, that is to be pasted on the Apple Configurator preparation window. Now that I have copied this, I'll take you back to the Apple Configurator window, paste it, and click on Next again. Now it will fetch the Trust Tanker certificates. So these are the certificates that have been used on the MDM server. You can choose to add additional certificates by clicking on this plus button that is present. Now I click on Next again. I've already provided an organization name, though you can provide your organization by clicking this option new organization. I'll click on next again. And you can see this is the iOS setup assistant. Right now, I have selected the option of showing only the updates for the first time. You can choose to either add more of them or choose to skip all of them by selecting this option. Don't show any of these steps. And then you click on prepare. As you can see, the blueprint has been prepared. Once that has been done, click on done here. And I've already connected a device via USB to explain this case. Now all you need to do after the device has been connected is to right click on it and click on apply. Select the blueprint you have created. And once that is done, the blueprint gets associated. The device will be enrolled on device activation. We'll see what happens on the device end. As you can see, this is the device being activated. First up, you know, the only basic setup step that will be shown is the selection of the Wi-Fi network. This is to end. This is for the device to actually contact the MDM server over Wi-Fi and enroll the device. As you can see, the user is requested for applying the configuration automatically. Once the user selects Apply Configuration, the MDM enrollment is initiated. However, the user still has the option of skipping the configuration. Once this is selected, the enrollment will not take place. As you can see, if apply configuration is selected, the configuration is installed, and the very next step is to start using the device. That's it. As we selected, no setup steps to be shown. There were none shown on the device as well. And the last step, would be assigning enrolled devices to employee. The biggest benefit with automated enrollment is that it splits the enrollment process into two different steps. 
in case of the devices that were already in use, the device onboarding as well as the user assignment were coupled and happened as a single step. However, in case of automated enrollment, the onboarding process is independent and the assignment process is independent. This is especially useful for the IT administrators who can simply onboard the device onto the MDM solution and keep the device stock in the inventory. So as and when the user, the employees join, they can assign the employee details and hand over the device to user, further making the enrollment process completely efficient. The next method is EMM token enrollment, which is a pretty similar method that we saw with respect to Apple Configurator, which has been provided by Google for bulk enrollment of Android devices. So this is how EMM token enrollment works in MDM. Firstly, the user needs to download the MEMDM app by providing the DPC identifier, which is also referred to as EMM token. The next step is to scan the QR code provided, and then the device gets automatically registered with MDM. Now I take you to the server to show you the QR code. Click on EMM token enrollment here and click on scan QR code. Once this QR code is scanned, the device will get enrolled with MDM. As you can see, AFW hash MEMDM is the DPC is the DPC provider where DPC identifier which is to be given on the device to initiate enrollment. This QR code is not to be confused with the QR code that we saw in the manual enrollment process. You must be wondering as to why this is supposed to be an automated enrollment when this is just an advancement or self-enrollment. The biggest benefit is that you can choose uh, you can choose to use EMM token enrollment after enrolling the devices via EMM token enrollment. The device gets provisioned as device owner. Device owner again uh, is provides the administrator with an extra set of capabilities as well as features. We also discussed device owner provisioning in our previous training session. Once the devices uh, are being enrolled, the next step is user assignment. I'll show you user assignment right now. Just one second, seems to be some problem, yep. So as you can see, this is a device that has been enrolled by the administrator, which is waiting for a user assignment. You can choose to either assign users in bulk by clicking on this option, assign users, where you need to provide a CSV which contains these mandatory details and then upload the CSV or you can also choose to assign users on a device by device basis. For that, I'll click on assign user. It's a local user again, selected the details. This is a user from the customer relations department, so I select that. You can optionally provide a device name and click on assign. Once I do that, the devices move from this window to the common enrollment window, which can be viewed by clicking on this devices tab. As you can see here, the devices here the device that was enrolled is shown. This is the device I'm talking about. Now this is what happens on the device end. The first step is for the user to provide the DPC token or the uh, DPC identifier or the EMM token. And once it is done, he needs to click on the scan QR option, scan the QR, and it is done. Now let us make this problem much more complicated. My organization has been growing and has purchased 500 new devices. And it's going to be obviously difficult to unbox each of them and then manually enroll. Though the methods that we looked at are automated, you still need to unbox each of the device and, and then enroll. So you must be wondering as to whether MDM provides you with a fully automated out of the box enrollment method. Yes. We do provide you with a fully automated out of the box enrollment method, but there are certain prerequisites. The first is that you need to create an account with Apple in case you want to enroll iOS devices or Google in case you want to enroll Android devices. The next prerequisite is that the devices must have been purchased either directly or from authorized resellers. 
Now we look at each of these methods in greater detail. First up, we'll be looking at Apple Device Enrollment Program. Firstly, you need to integrate the MDM server with the DEP portal and then add the devices to the DEP portal. Since the DEP portal and the MDM server are integrated, you are essentially adding the devices to the MDM server. As you can see here, these two steps are admin performed and are one time. Once the devices have been added, the next step is to distribute these devices, which gets enrolled automatically on device activation. These steps can be performed either by the user or the administrator. So let us see how this is to be done. So I go to the MDM server, click on enrollment from the top menu and select Apple DEP. The first step is to download the MDM public key certificate. As you see, I've just done that and then click on next. And then you need to log in to the Apple DEP portal and upload the downloaded PKC. To download the public key certificate, click on add MDM server, provide the organization name for identifying the MDM server, and then also ensure that you select automatically assign new devices. This ensures that all the devices that are added to the DEP portal gets automatically assigned to the created server. Once this is done, click on next again, and then upload the PKC that you downloaded from the MDM server. Once you have done that, click on next again. As you can see, you have got a server token. This server token is to be uploaded back into the MDM server to complete the integration between the MDM server and Apple DEP portal. So I click on done again. So I'll just quickly go to the main screen. This is the third step after we have uploaded the token that we downloaded from the Apple DEP portal, which is device activation settings. As you can see, it has got a whole lot of interesting options. The first of which is restricting users from removing MDM. When this is enabled, it ensures that the users cannot revoke MDM management. Similarly, it also provides the default option of supervision, which as I've already told you, provides you with ultimate control over the devices. Similarly, you can also choose to enroll the devices using device uh, during device activation so that the first thing when the device is booted on for the first time is to initiate enrollment. Next up, you can also choose to auto assign these users on device authentication, whereby the users provide their AD credentials and enroll the device by themselves, further easing the process of enrollment. This is the iOS setup assistant, which we saw in Apple Configurator. You can choose to skip all of these steps or some of these steps similar to Apple Configurator. Once you, have, once you are done with that, click on Create. As you can see, the integration has been, is complete, but as you can see, no devices have been added. This is because we have not added the devices to the DEP portal. So I'll take you back to the DEP portal now. To add the devices, you need to click on your account name and select organization details. And the first step that you need to do is to click on add reseller or supplier. And then you provide your reseller details. Now, anytime you purchase the devices from this reseller, the devices get automatically added to the DEP portal, further automating an already automated enrollment process. Then click on OK now. This is what I told you. The devices have been purchased from the reseller. You select that option, provide a reseller ID that has been given to the reseller previously by Apple. Click on verify just to see whether the details entered have been correct, and then click on OK. Now, this takes care of the devices that we purchased in future. What about the devices that are already being purchased and, in your, and are in your inventory? Sadly, you'll have to add these devices manually, but fret not. Apple provides you with three different options of adding these devices. You can choose to add devices via serial number or the order number, or you can choose to upload a CSV file for bulk addition of devices. I'll choose the serial number option. I have provided a serial number, and I choose to assign it to the server that I just created, which was Silker. So once I have done, I click on OK again. Once I do that, the assignment is complete and all the devices that have been added to the DEP portal gets added during the daily sync. 
in case you want to add it immediately, you need to click on the sync devices button that we just saw previously. Now we'll see what happens on the device end. Once the device has been powered on for the first time, you can see the configuration prompt that was shown when the devices were configured using Apple Configurator. But the key difference to be noted is that there is no option of the users keeping this configuration. The only option is to click on the next button. Once that has been clicked on, the configuration gets automatically installed and boom, the device is ready to use. No set of steps and no option of skipping the enrollment as well. Now we look at zero touch enrollment, which is the DEP equivalent for Android devices that has been commissioned by Google. This is how zero touch enrollment actually works. Firstly, you need to set up the Android zero touch portal by providing a Google account. Then you need to create an MDM configuration on the portal and then assign the configuration to the devices that have been added to the portal. Similar to DEP, all the devices that are added to the portal are essentially being added back to the MDM server as the MDM server and the Zero Touch portal have already been integrated using the Google account. These steps are admin performed and are once again one time. Now distribute these devices which gets automatically enrolled with MDM on activation. These steps can be performed either by the administrator or by the employees themselves. So this is the zero touch portal. So I will show you how to create a configuration. So I'll click on this plus icon here. And uh, this is the configuration window. You need to provide a name for the configuration to identify it in future and then select the EMM DPC, which is Manage Engine MDM. And then you need to provide the DPC extras, which is a JSON file. I'll show you where this is available on the MDM server in just a moment. Then you need to provide a company name as well as a contact email address. Once that is done, click on apply. And then the next step is to associate it to the devices that have been added to the portal. These devices will be available in this devices tab. These devices will be added by the reseller as said here. Now before we can actually see what happens on the device end, I'll show you where you need to get the DPC extras JSON file. So I'll take you to the server, click on zero touch enrollment from the left pane and click on this one, the zero touch enrollment steps. As I said, this is the DPC extras JSON file which is to be added while creating the configuration. Simply clicking this button will copy the DPC extras file and then you need to paste it to the zero touch portal. Once the devices get enrolled via this zero touch process, they get automatically added to the zero touch view. Then you need to assign the user to complete enrollment. We already saw how to assign users when we are seeing the EMM token enrollment. So I'll skip that now. I'll show you what happens on the device end. As you can see, the device has been powered on for the first time. And then the first setup step that is shown is to install the MEMDM app, which is mandatory for Android management, as said at the start of this session. Once that is done, the device is being set up as a work device, which means that it is automatically being provisioned as device owner. Then you click on finish and the enrollment is complete. As you saw in the EP, there is no option of the user skipping enrollment. So we'll have a quick recap of all the enrollment methods that we just saw. In case of devices that are already in use, you can choose to enroll them via invites, which can be sent individually or in bulk, it can be enrolled via self-enrollment. In case of new devices, we have a whole suite of automated enrollment methods. In case of iOS devices, you can use DEP and Apple Configurator. In case of Android devices, you can use NFC, NOX, which are not explained in the session, or QR code, which is the EMM token enrollment, and ZTE, which is the zero touch enrollment. In case of Windows devices, you have got ICD enrollment as well as autopilot. In case you want to know more details about the various enrollment methods that are present in MDM, you can opt for a personalized demo which you can request at the end of this session in a survey. So this brings us to the end of the first scenario.
The second scenario is pushing corporate configurations to manage devices. So having onboarded the devices, the next and the most obvious step is to push the corporate configurations to the managed devices to ensure that the device is ready to use once the enrollment is done and the user need not configure anything. So these are some of the most basic configurations that any organization might require, which includes passcode policy, setting up Wi-Fi, VPN, email, and probably exchange, as well as single sign-on. In addition to that, you can also choose to brand your uh, organization's corporate devices by having a fixed wallpaper on the home screen as well as the lock screen. Let me show you all these methods quickly on the MDM server. So I'll take you back to the MDM server, click on device management, click on profiles, and I'll be creating a new profile for this purpose. So I select Android, provide a meaningful name, click on continue. These are the list of policies that are supported for Android by MDM. First up, I'll be creating the passcode profile. So I want to apply the passcode to the entire device. And the most basic requirement for my passcode is that it should be containing both alphabets as well as numerals. So once I have done that, all I need to do is to click on Save and then publish this profile. You can also choose to configure a whole lot of other options as well. But for this purpose, I'll be showing just this one setup, which is requiring alphanumeric characters in the passcode. So I click on Publish. Once the profile has been published, it is ready for distribution. To do that, I click on this option here. And I can choose to distribute it to both groups as well as devices. So I want to distribute this to a finance department. So select that, click on Action, Associate Profile. I click on the profile that I created, and I click on Select. Now, as you can see, the profile has been associated to this group. So any device that falls into this group will automatically have the passcode policy applied to it without any admin intervention. Let me show you what happens on the device end. As you can see, the uh, MDM will provide a mandate to the employee. The passcode is to be changed within a stipulated time, and the passcode must comply with the organization's standards. Now, what happens in case the standards change? Simple. All you need to do is to just modify the profile. So I'll take you back to the MDM server, click on Profiles again, and click on the profile that I just created. Click on Profile Details and Modify. Click on Continue. Then I click on Complex Value. As you can see, a whole lot of other configurations are now being shown. Now I click on Save and Publish, go back to the group, and just reassociate the profile, and the modification automatically happens on the devices as well. Similarly, you can also choose to configure Wi Fi here. You need to provide the SSID, Silker 1, and then the security type. Based on your security type, you'll be shown various other mandatory parameters as well. The next step, I'll show you how to configure VPN. As you can see, we have provided a connection name for identifying the connection and the connection type. MDM supports these many VPNs right now. You can choose to, choose to ask MDM to support additional VPNs by clicking on this link here. Now, once I select a particular VPN type, I need to configure the relevant details to complete that. Additionally, I can also choose to configure email as well as exchange, and the process is pretty similar. All you need to do is to fill up the mandatory details, click on Save, and then publish the profile. It's pretty much similar for wallpaper as well. You can uh, click on Browse, add the company logo as an image, and then prevent the user from changing the wallpaper as well if need be. And similarly, in case you want to know how to configure SSO, I'll show you another example here. Device management, profiles, create profile. I'll show it for Apple this time. Enterprise SSO. As you all must be knowing, SSO is a secure way for the employees to log in to the web services or apps of the organization. This ensures complete data privacy, authentication, as well as security, 
and also prevents the need for the users to remember multiple passcodes as well as the constant complaint that falls into the IT administrator about the users forgetting their passcodes and the IT administrators required to reset it every single time. This is one of the most common complaints that have been encountered by IT administrators. Using SSO, this can be completely prevented. All you need to do is to fill up the requisite details, click on save. As I've not configured anything here, it shows an error. Once you have done that, you need to save, publish, and then associate the profile, and boom, it is done. Now let me show you a very interesting feature in MDM. Having configured the email uh, email policy for devices, how do I prevent unmanaged devices from accessing corporate emails? You can configure all the security options for the devices that have been enrolled with MDM. But what happens in case the user is using a different device to access the corporate email? You cannot obviously control the devices that have not been enrolled with MDM. However, you can secure the other end, which is securing the access to corporate emails. This can be done using conditional access. This is conditional access in a nutshell. Unmanaged devices are restricted access to O365 or Exchange Server, whereas managed devices can continue to have access. So these are the mandatory prerequisites. AD should be configured, self-enrollment is required, and the basic authentication is to be enabled in the machine that is running the exchange server by your organization. This is mandatory only in case of the server running Windows Server 2010 OS version. So again, this is how conditional access actually works in MDM. You need to integrate your exchange to the MDM server, enforce a conditional exchange access policy, these are admin performed and are one time. Once this is done, only devices that are enrolled with MDM are given access to Exchange. Well, I'll quickly take you to the server and show you how this is done. So click on Device Management, select Conditional Exchange Access, select the host type as O365 or Exchange on premises. I'll be using O365 for this example. The server name gets automatically prefetched. Provide your username and password. Once that is done, click on Next. As you can see, these are the number of devices that have not been enrolled with MDM, but are accessing Exchange right now. These are the devices which are to be restricted access. So for this purpose, I need to configure a conditional Exchange access policy. To do that, I click on Configure now. I want to restrict all devices that have been not enrolled with MDM, though you do have an option of restricting only particular devices. Similarly, I want to provide the users with some amount of time as grace period for them to enroll the devices. During grace period, the users can continue to access Exchange, though they will be sent warning mails regarding the restriction of their access. Once I have selected this, I need to click on Apply Policy. As you can see, I've applied policy here. Now let us see what happens once the policy has been applied. So uh, I'll go to the server again, device management, and conditional exchange access. As you can see, there are three devices in the grace period and eight devices that have been restricted. These devices cannot access MDM for now, and the device details are shown here. The ones that are not being enrolled but are in grace period are listed on top, and the devices for whom the access has been blocked are listed here. You can choose to filter these based on the access state as well as the enrollment type here. So what happens to the restricted devices? How do they get back their access? For that, click on this link. As you can see, the self-enrollment URL is shown here. This URL is to be used by the users and enroll these restricted devices to gain back access to Exchange. So this is how conditional exchange access is done, and this is how it secures unauthorized access to your corporate exchange server. This brings us to the end of the two main scenarios. We'll have a quick look at a few smaller scenarios and their solutions. The first scenario is that my organization uses Windows devices, so how can I enroll these devices in bulk without user interaction? Yes, Windows devices have been gaining a steady foothold in organizations, and MDM does understand that and has started providing extensive admin automated enrollment methods for Windows as well. I'll quickly take you to the server. Click on Enrollment. These are the list 
of automated enrollment methods available for Windows. We have a dedicated admin enrollment method for laptops and Surface Pros, uh, ICD enrollment method for Windows 10 devices. ICD enrollment is very similar to Apple Configurator. Similarly, MDM also provides you Azure enrollment or Autopilot for bulk enrollment of Windows 10 devices. Azure enrollment is pretty similar to DEP. Now the next scenario is an employee has moved from one department to another. The old profiles and restrictions are to be removed and the new ones that are pertaining to the new department must be added. How can this be done over the air? Now how many times have we encountered this situation? Uh, a lot of times uh, employees move from one department to the other and it is the burden, uh, burdening task for the IT administrator to remove the profiles, apps from uh, the device and then associate the newer profiles and apps. In MDM, these two steps are taken care of in just one single click. I'll show you how this is done. So I'll have to take you back to the MDM server, device management, groups and devices. So I'll select a group, say HR department. Now I'll move the first device. So I select this device. This device is moving to a new department. So all I do is click on move to group. I select this and this device is moving to the customer relations department. So I select that and click on select. That is all is to be done for the IT administrator. The old policies and apps are automatically removed. The new policies and apps are automatically associated. The third scenario, I want any downloads from my internal website to be viewed only using a managed app. Is it possible? Most certainly this is possible using managed web domains for iOS. So I'll take you quickly back to the MDM server and show you how it is to be done. Click on profiles from the left pane, create profile, Apple, continue. And here is managed web domains. All you need to do is to provide the URL. Once the URL has been provided, all the downloads from this particular URL can be viewed using only a managed app, which can also include MDM. In addition to this, the URL cannot be saved as PDF using Safari, which again ensures further data security. Now for the fourth scenario, I don't want users to be able to remove devices from the MDM management. How is this possible? As we just saw, the automated enrollment methods such as DEP automatically prevent reworking of MDM management. However, in case of manual enrollment, you, you have workaround to prevent users from revoking management. I'll show you how this is done. So I'll take you back to the server. Enrollment. Scroll down and select MDM app under Android. As long as this option no is selected for allow user to remove MDM app, the users cannot remove this MDM app and thus will not be able to revoke management. So I'll click on MDM settings under Windows. And uh, similar to Android, as long as this option is no, the users cannot remove the MDM workspace account and hence will not be able to revoke management. Similarly, you, I'll show you another interesting option. So I take you to enrollment settings, and when this option is selected, every time a device is unmanaged, the IT administrator can be notified of the user revoking the management of MDM. Now we'll have a look at the questions. The first question is, I have purchased a few devices neither directly from Apple nor from its resellers. Can I enroll it with DEP? Most certainly this is possible, but you require Apple configurator and, and device running iOS 11 or capable of running iOS 11 and DEP must be supported in your country. If these three prerequisites are fulfilled, you can enroll iOS devices into DEP using Apple configurator. When you're preparing Apple configurator, Ensure that this option, Add to Device Enrollment Program, is selected. And also this option too. When this is done, the devices get added automatically to DEP using Apple Configurator. And the enrollment process is similar to DEP. The device gets automatically enrolled on device activation. The second question is, what are the other methods of authentication that MDM supports? As we just saw, during manual enrollment, that OTP is used as a means of authentication. However, MDM does support additional methods of authentication as well. I'll quickly show you the methods that have been supported by MDM. So I'll take you to the MDM server. So in addition to OTP, you can also use Active Directory authentication or use combination of 
both OTP and Active Directory authentication, which ultimately results in a two-factor authentication, adding further security. Now, is it possible to apply a profile created for one platform to devices running on other platforms? As you have just seen, there are payloads that are supported, uh, there are policies that are supported for one platform that are not supported for the other. In such a scenario, MDM doesn't allow you to uh, distribute a uh, profile created for one platform to be distributed to other platforms because of all the backend processes that are happening. Last question is, I want to apply different policies as separate profiles. Is it possible to apply multiple profiles to devices? Most certainly you can do that. During the training session, I explain how to bundle multiple profiles into multiple, po I'm sorry, multiple policies into one profile. Consequently, you can also configure multiple profiles and all of it can be distributed to groups and devices. Now for the last question, what happens in case I apply two profiles with contradictory restrictions? Assume you have distributed two profiles to the devices, one which enables camera and one which disables camera. So first up, you have distributed the profile that disables camera and then you immediately distribute another profile that enables camera. In case of iOS and Windows, the most secure combination is taken, which means that the camera will be disabled even though the profile with the camera being enabled was distributed. However, in case of Android, the most recently distributed profile is taken. So in case of Android, the latest profile, which is the profile which has enabled the camera, will be applied. This brings us to the end of the question session as well as the training. I hope you enjoyed the session. If you did, please rate us on a scale of one to five in the survey that is shown at the end of this session. The ratings implies that one is the lowest and five is the best. In addition to that, MDM has been working a lot on GDPR compliance and we have introduced a whole lot of settings pertaining to GDPR compliance and compliance standards in general. In case you're curious about what MDM has done for GDPR compliance, you can choose to opt for a personalized demo in the survey that is shown for you to fill up the ratings. Once you close this session, a survey will be shown where you can rate this training session as well as opt for a personalized demo by providing your basic contact details. The MDM team will contact you at your most convenient time and show you all the capabilities of MDM and specific capabilities with respect to GDPR. In case you liked this session, you can spread a word across the various social media. The next training schedule will be on app management and device security. Thank you folks for your time. I hope this session was informative and engaging for you. Thank you again.